Hey friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me back in my craft room today. It's a new release from Pretty Pink Posh, and I wanted to share a fun card to celebrate with the blog hop today, and I wanted to include my process. So quickly, all the different supplies I'm using from the new release include the Ghost Shaker Stitch Pumpkin Dies, the Sentiment Strips Halloween Stamp Set, and the Sentiment Strips dies as well as the layered argyle stencil set and I've already done my die cutting and trimming so we can get started into the process of this card. So I have a piece of kind of a gray craft cardstock color. It's from the latest Your Paper Insider subscription box which is for summer 2023 and I've die cut some different strips using some cardstock and vellum from that same paper pack as well as my pumpkin and ghost. Um, I just picked a few of my favorite kind of pastel vibes that I thought matched really well with a pattern paper that I'm using from the Luna uh, Prima Marketing 8x8 paper pad. I'm going to start with stenciling as usual since it needs the most time to dry. I'm centering that piece of like I said, it's kind of a grayish craft card stock onto the center of my waffle flower sticky grip mat. And then starting with the A stencil with these diamonds from the layered Argyle stencil set. And I'm going to use spun sugar to fill in all of these diamonds. I trimmed this piece of cardstock to be three quarters of an inch smaller than A2. So it is four and three quarters by three and a half inches. Um, so that way there would be plenty of space around this piece to see the pattern paper that I chose from that Prima Marketing paper pad and a little bit of a white cardstock border. With the second stencil in the layered set, I brought in Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide. I'm using Distress Oxides on top of this craft cardstock so that way the softness and the pastel kind of vibe that I want, it, the ink will sit on top of the paper rather than the dye ink where it kind of soaks into the paper. And then for the third layer, I brought in some stencil butter. This is pearl white stencil butter from the Crafters Workshop, and it created just a really pretty argyle pattern on this piece of paper. So while that dries, I'm going to go soak all of my stencils and my grip mat in some soapy water. I'll clean it up after my video. So I'm going to move on to stamping now. I die cut this cute little boo from the Ghost Shaker die set. I just love how cute and dainty it is. And I wanted it to be the beginning of my sentiment. So I did die cut some of the longer strips from the sentiment strip die set, which is going to be probably my new favorite die set ever. I love all the different designs. There's scalloped, there's straight edge, there's um, straight edge. That's funny. Uh, some cute little stitch details. There's just solid strips, which are great too. And I love that I can layer them all together. So once I have the Your Spooktacular sentiment lined up in that thin uh, rectangle strip, I stamped it with black ink because I do have a few little black details in the rest of my card. And I stamped it all the way to the right of that strip. And then I'm layering one of the longer rectangles with the stitching detail. I die cut it out of some pink kind of pastel pearlescent vellum. And I'm layering that on top of the blue scalloped, um, the longest strip rectangle die cut. And then I am gluing my white strip on top of that. So I love that you can just have that white strip or that size by itself, or you can layer it onto the other different strips. It's going to be so many fun combinations. This is an excellent die set to have in your stash. Even if you use it with other sentiments or other companies, this is such a great basic die set. I love it. And then I'm using my tweezers and my fine point glue tip to glue the boo onto the left side of my sentiment. So really loving how that turned out and the layering and the soft colors. I just think pink and orange, even though there's no orange in this particular card, but I love the pastel pink, orange, and like teal vibes for Halloween. So I'm really happy with the colors in my Your Paper Insider box this month and how it's going to work wonderful for Halloween cards. I die cut my cute little ghost out of this uh, white cardstock, but I know it's kind of hard to see on camera and in pictures, but it does have a subtle pearlescent 
kind of feel to it. So there are some really pretty colors when you see this ghost, this paper in, car in person. And when the light hits it just right, it really has a fun look to it. I die cut the face of my um, ghost out of some black cardstock and I'm just using this jewel picker that I have. Uh, my mom gave it to me, but I do have it linked in my basic supplies and also Trinity Stamps has a wonderful one too. But I am just using the kind of waxy tip to pick up these tiny little pieces of cardstock that I die cut. And then I'm using the like pointy part to help pick up any excess glue as well as just kind of move my pieces around until I'm happy with my little ghost's face placement. <laughs> For the pumpkin, I die cut the medium sized pumpkin and all of them have their own little stems and there's different size leaves and vines uh, to die cut out. So I'm gonna cut my little pumpkin together but before I do, I wanted to give it a little bit of dimension. So I'm grabbing hickory smoke to add onto my pumpkin stem. I grabbed Peacock Feathers Distress Ink this time. These are all Distress Inks, not Oxides, to add onto my Teal Pumpkin and then Spun Sugar to add a little bit of dimension to my leaf and vine. I'm going to clean up my mess. I try to make sure I'm wiping down any ink as I go along. Otherwise, it will end up on white somewhere and on my hands. So I do like to try to keep my uh, glass mat clean as I go along. So I have my A2 card base. It's top folding, which is just my preference. And I have this piece of pattern paper. Again, it's a kind of subtle pink, black, and white pattern, which is what inspired everything else on this card. And it's from Prima, Prima Marketing. I, I think it's from last year. So I do have the 8x8 pad, but I could only find the 6x6 pad online. Uh, so I did link that version down below. There's also a 12x12 that you can find as well still. Um, and that was trimmed to be slightly smaller than A2. So I cut off an, a quarter, no, an eighth of an inch. Um, so it's like a sixteenth of an inch around of that white cardstock. I added some of that Hickory Smoke Distress ink around my panel now that it's dry. And then bringing in some white gold watercolor uh, from my Starry Colors pigment uh, watercolor set onto that background as well as my pumpkin. Um, just wanted to put a little bit more on my cute little teal pumpkin. And it dries pretty quickly. So while it's drying, I'm gonna just add some glue to the back. I was gonna use my tape runner, but since it's still kind of drying, I'm gonna use my wet glue on the back side so that way I can get this glue down and it can continue drying while it's also adhering to the center of my card base. <laughs> I'm going to work on my pumpkin now, so I'm going to glue this stem to the back side of my pumpkin as well as the little pink leaf. And then I'm going to glue my vine to kind of be behind the stem but yet cross over on the front of the pumpkin. I wanted it to look a little bit more like there's dimension to it. So I will tuck the start of the vine behind my stem but then also bring the vine to go on top of the pumpkin. So it looks like it's kind of coming from the back of the pumpkin to the front. Just an illusion of dimension there. I'm going to play around with the layout and I finally settle on having my sentiment towards the bottom of the card and my ghost kind of peeking out from behind my teal pumpkin. And of course we got to add some dimension so I'm going to put some foam adhesive behind my sentiment strip, just fully cover it up, peel off the release paper and then glue that down. Again, it's not quite to the bottom of the card but it does give a little bit of grounding for my pumpkin and my ghost. Next, I'm going to glue down my ghost because it will be behind my pumpkin, so I need to get that adhered first. And I'm just grabbing more foam adhesive. These are the extra pieces from my little tiny dots of foam adhesive from scrapbook.com, but I do not like to waste. Those are still perfectly good foam adhesive, so just cutting off strips of that extra foam and adding it behind my ghost as well as my pumpkin, making sure to not add any where it will overlap with the ghost.
Now that those are nice and secure, my card is pretty much done, but I wanted to add a little bit of bling. Not that that stencil butter doesn't already add some great shimmer, and the paper of my ghost is also really pretty, but I grabbed my snowflake pops of color from scrapbook.com, and I'm just adding it to the outline part of my ghost, so just on the outside of that stitching detail, and then I'm also going to add it to the vine of my pumpkin, so that little pink vine there, I'm going to add more details. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to add just a couple of pops around the background. I think I did three total, one on the bottom and two on the top in that, oh, nope, just kidding, two on the bottom and one on the top just to add a little bit more shine across the card. I like to tap them so they turn into more of an enamel dot look than a Hershey Kiss look. And here is a final look at my cute pastel teal and pink and gray Halloween card. I hope you love the brand new product from Pretty Pink Posh. I will have a link to the new area of her shop down below in my list of supplies. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!